what are the best growth hacks for Amazon businesses today? How to find and work with influencers to build your brand story. Did you know they are the fastest way to build your brand IP and trust? On this episode, we have the leaders and educators of the Amazon industry share their tips and experiences. They are here to share the trends that they're watching and what data points to make the biggest opportunities. This is episode 17 of our CrowdCreate Mastermind series, where we bring the most influential thought leaders each week to share their insights on what they're seeing in the industry. Welcome to the CrowdCreate Mastermind. Uh, the purpose of this mastermind is really to bring together the community, leverage what we call the wisdom of the crowds. You've all been invited here because you are thought leaders uh, as an Amazon seller, just in this space. So really the purpose of this is to bring attention to your work, build some awesome connections, give value to others that are going to be listening to this and essentially uh, debate some uh, hot topics and, and provide value to the community. So typically these uh, masterminds are an hour long. We end on the dot, each person, we're gonna go around first, introduce yourself for 30 seconds, just who are you, what are you currently working on and what do you see as the biggest opportunities right now for Amazon sellers? So uh, Ivan, would you like to kick it off? Yep, awesome. So my name is Ivan. I'm one of the co-founders of CrowdCreate and what we do is we connect dot leaders, investors and business executives in the you know, Amazon seller world to grow their network. And what I'm working on right now is we're working on launching these masterminds across multiple industries. So not just Amazon, but also gaming, crypto, real estate, and startups. And we're also launching a private community where you can join and you can actually engage with some of the speakers in this mastermind. Uh, so that's what I'm truly excited on. Where I see the biggest opportunity is just, um, you know, there's so many, there's so many communities going online. There's so many resources activating. It's, it, there's an opportunity for everyone to become a thought leader right now because everyone's searching for answers. Awesome. Uh, CJ, would love for you to go next and introduce yourself. Yeah, I am the, uh, the senior partner of the world's greatest team of people helping Amazon sellers with problems, okay? I am certainly no genius, but I've got a whole team. We're up to about 40 different people working on getting Amazon sellers' accounts back, getting their listings back when they get suspended helping them develop their brands, protecting their brands from other sellers, going after Amazon when Jeff steals your money or your inventory. And I think that one of the greatest things that's going on right now is the tremendous amount of capital that's being pumped into businesses to buy your Amazon-based businesses and your Amazon-based brands. So I believe it's time to develop your brand, protect your brand like a hawk, and then consider using what we used to call in the 90s, a golden parachute. I love it, CJ, great introduction. Seth, we would love to have you go next. Sure, thanks so much for having me, guys. My name is Seth Kniep, Kniep in a Real. I like to say that, that's sort of like a tagline about just keeping it down to earth. I am the CEO and co-founder of Just One Dime. I built my Amazon business off of a single dime, walking around, doubling it, talking to random people, when I got it up to around $400, I used that to invest in my first product, tried to sell it on eBay, failed miserably, started selling on Amazon, was surprised, oh my goodness, it's taking off, and just kind of stumbled into it, made a ton of mistakes along the way, continued to grow that, and out of that grew just one dime. We now do two things. We build Amazon stores for people who are looking for a way to grow their capital, but they don't have, have the time or want to deal with the hassle of doing it themselves. And then we also train people how to do it. So I represent a team in multiple states in the US. We have 37 staff today. And those are the two things that we focus on, building Amazon stores and then training people how to build a legit Amazon business. Nice. Seth, what do you think are the, uh, what's the biggest opportunity you're seeing right now for Amazon sellers? The opportunity to build a brand um, just a few months back when Amazon started rolling out more programs that favor brands, the brand opportunity is huge. I've been saying this for years. I said this back when private label was still a really uh, hotly coined term, but brands are the opportunity today. People are going online to find brands to fall in love with. People are more open. They're less committed to, you know, back when I was a kid, you know, Nike or Whirlpool or Colgate, these were brands that people were loyal to because something about walking into a brick and mortar store made you feel like this is where I'm supposed to go. This is the brand. 
but the online opportunity has leveled the playing field. And so people are more open than ever to build or to find brands. And so I think the opportunity to build brands is stronger than it's ever been before. And by brands, I don't mean, you know, just finding an influencer to promote the product. I mean, an actual brand that people fall in love with that people actually go back to, to repeat buy, especially if it's a consumerism type good. Awesome. Thanks, Seth. Absolutely. And uh, we are putting links to everybody's bio in the chat. Uh, usually there's going to be questions from, uh, from any attendees, but feel free to engage with each other in the chat as well. Uh, Thomas, would love for you to introduce yourself next. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, thanks so much guys for having me here. So my name is Thomas. I'm uh, the co-founder and also CMO of Celix. So for those of you that don't know Celix, Celix has been one of the first um, Amazon all in one tools out there. We founded it in 2014. Since then, it has been a very long journey. In the last two, three years, we have shifted more and more to Amazon PPC and Amazon advertising. That's pretty much, you know, also coming and talking about the opportunity, the big area where we think just many things are happening. We have millions of sellers, which are now pretty much forced to learn PPC, to know how to do PPC, to really leverage CPC to sell the products. And we believe that we can really, really rethink the way our advertising works. We think the way our advertising works in e-commerce and pretty much help all of them to build the brands as Seth said, right? And I think this is a big challenge and opportunity for the full industry. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Mark, would love for you to introduce yourself. Yeah. Hey everybody, Mark Liu. I'm the president of Merchant Words. Um, we started back in 2013, one of the first in the space to start mining keywords. Um, I've been with the company since around 2016. My background is in product development for startups specifically. So spent about 17 years uh, growing products for various uh, industries. George, who's the founder and a dear friend of mine, we used to work together before he started the company, it took off. So I joined um, and subsequently what we started to do is uh, build a big data company. So over the, over the years, we laid down all the infrastructure uh, to be able to acquire, um, organize, analyze, and get ready for consumption, a mass amount of data. And so we've seen a lot of uh, uh, development there, and uh, but the website won't belay to that to you, but um, that's kind of the direction that we're headed in the future. Um, so I'm happy to be here. I, I think uh, you, know, these, you guys are, represent a, um, a really good slice of the industry. Uh, I think the opportunities that that we see are, um, you know, just to echo the brands, uh, definitely PPC as well. That's a huge, huge growth area uh, for anybody that needs to get into the space. And what I would, uh, what, what I would submit also is um, consider internationalization. So this is, uh, this is something that they're continuing to, Amazon is continuing to make easier and easier for folks. So the notion of just only selling in the United States can be supplemented where you can go, for example, to Canada, right? Another English speaking country where you can share lots of different things and you can very easily manage all of that. So um, I would say you can also look for you know, greener pastures elsewhere, um, utilizing all the tools that are already available to you. It's awesome. We're gonna have some great talking points uh, later. Ed, would love for you to introduce yourself next. Yeah, hi everyone, how are you doing? So um, I'm not actually a wizard based in a castle here in the UK, although uh, I just suddenly realised that I might actually look that way with this stone wall behind me and this crazy beard I seem to have uh, attracted over the last year. Uh, I'm uh, the CEO and founder of Source Mogul, and what we do is uh, we scan, we're all about data ultimately. So we scan uh, 25 million odd products a week from various retailers, compare them all to Amazon, and since we've been going about two years on source mogul we collected over 13 billion data points uh, so understanding what uh, price history has been the sales price the and it's, it's just crazy the kind of things that you can do with data these days and to my mind that's really the big opportunity for the for the amazon sellers now is, is really getting under the skin of what the data profiles of various products can offer um, so yeah really excited to be here and uh thanks everyone thanks ed that's good uh, Ram, would love for you to go next. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Ram Menon. I head the sales team at SellerApp. Uh, so we're one of the largest e-commerce companies in terms of data solutions. Uh, you know, as the world of e-commerce is getting more and more complex, our objective is to ensure that utilizing data, technology, psychology, using the science to ultimately empower businesses so that they can expand, right? Uh, as the previous people already said, it's more about global economics, right? to ensure that people are able to sell not only in the US, but at a global scale. Uh, and, you know, our job is to ensure that we help customers at every single point from right from 
searching a product to write from managing the campaigns to even giving the end goals of creating reports for them. Awesome. Thanks, Ram. Uh, Alex, I'd be to go next. Hey everyone, um, thanks for having me. Alex Sklar, Head of Business Development and Partnerships with Payability. Um, what we do is we're looking to, you know, improve the cash conversion cycle for Amazon sellers and those selling in other marketplaces. Uh, in the last six years, we've deployed uh, a little over $3.5 billion in growth capital to Amazon sellers, both to shorten that net 14 that they typically get from Amazon and turn it into a net one as well as give them, you know, provide them growth capital to invest in inventory marketing and, you know, other things to help grow their business and, uh, you know, solve typically one of the biggest pain points all businesses have, which is getting access to capital. Um, so that's what we work on. That's, uh, you know, I've, I've been um, with the company for about two years. I've been in fintech for a little over eight years. And um, as far as like, uh, you know, what's on the horizon and what we, um, you know, I, I tend to agree with CJ and I tend to agree with Seth that there's, such a tremendous amount of money pouring into Amazon right now. And, you know, whether it was the pandemic just kind of opened everyone's eyes or, you know, the contactless nature that we're all in right now has really shown people that we all like convenience. E-commerce provides convenience. The faster you can get something in your hands with just one button, the better. And so we're seeing a tremendous amount of capital pouring in from all areas, whether it's VCs, whether it's acquisitions, whether it's SPACs. And to Seth's, Seth's point, that usually starts with you having something that is acquirable, which is the brand. So I think that's what we're gonna, I, I think we're gonna see people developing their brands more. Um, to Seth's point, it's not just gonna be an influencer talking about it, it's gonna be a brand that people really wanna be a part of. We're seeing a lot more now that people are like getting more into their story of why they created the brand and the mission behind it. And we're seeing more and more mission driven D2Cs. And I think we're gonna see even more of that because people wanna feel connected with the things that they're buying. That's great. We really have a good panel here of uh, all different sides of the Amazon and Milton uh, from the influence and review side. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for having me. Uh, I actually work on the other side of the, I say, of the value chain. So I work with the brands, helping them elevate their awareness, both inside of the Amazon ecosystem and also yeah. outside of the ecosystem. So we're doing this on, on both sides. And uh, I host a channel that's called EBP Man Tech Reviews and uh, get a lot of Amazon sellers that come to me to help them uh, really expose the, the benefit from their products and obviously the increased sales attraction by attracting people from the network as well as what's going on inside of the Amazon ecosystem with either Amazon Live or any other type of streaming solution that they want me to be a part of. That's awesome. Thanks, Milton. Yep. Ivan, would you like to start with the first uh yeah, it's just ex it's extremely fascinating here to just see the collection and and the people on this panel because we literally represent the entire ecosystem from brand creation to brand growth to brand development and I I see one of the trends that is mentioned a lot is creating brands that uh, people love so let's actually start on the brand side because a lot of uh, our backers and actually our community has been asking you know what's the first thing that people need to do when they're creating an Amazon brand. And I know CJ, you talk a lot about from the legal side and even getting it ready for acquisition. Uh, what are your thoughts on creating, creating a brand? Oh, you're muted. CJ, you're muted. There were some sirens going off. I'm in New York, so I put on the mute there for a few minutes. So it's all about intellectual property rights. It is all about making sure that you own rights in a way, either through warranty, trademark, copyright. I love you guys are talking about um, having a story built into your brand. There's a great book about building a story brand that talks about this. And it's all about having your product and your brand geared up in a way that you can stop other people from stealing your sales and build assets. Like your intellectual property is a huge asset that sellers and brands can develop that nobody else can take away from you. So I think the development, it's IP, 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 intellectual property, intellectual property, intellectual property. And that, that, that is where it's been going now for years. And Seth has killed it that with the pandemic coming on, um, you have now an opportunity that's never existed before since everyone is shopping online anyway. You don't got to get on the shelves in brick and mortar. 
you need to develop your story brand now and online and no other opportunity out of thing has ever been presented where anybody can do this. And so any of the, the panelists can also always jump in if you guys have something to say, but I'd actually love to toss that over to Seth. You know, this, this is your bread and butter, bread and butter. Sorry about that, but you sure. live, you live this world and you help people do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, something that CJ said about intellectual property. Um, and I love that CJ, you would talk about intellectual property. It's good <laughs> because it's so key. Um, the Amazon's IP accelerator program, which came out not too long ago, allows you to get a trademark, not the trademark registered, but your brand registry in as fast as two weeks. Um, it took us four weeks with the last one that we did, but they say they can do it as fast as two weeks. And what it is, is it's like going to Amazon and you have all these listings where you can see all the products, but instead you're seeing a bunch of IP trademark lawyers. And when you look at each one has their own set of reviews. And we found by experience that if you go for those that have a ton of reviews, they get back to you much more slowly. Those who have hard any reviews, it's less trust. So we tend to go for the middle and they tend to get back fast because they're a little newer, but they're moving fast, but they have a lot of credibility. And again, I hope I'm not stealing anything CJ from when I say this at all, but it's just a program through which it is so easy to get trademarked um, or to get your brand registry even before your trademark is approved because it can take 8, 12, 16 months sometimes depending on how many classifications you go for to get your trademark approved. So again, back to what CJ said, right there, you're already protecting your trademark. So that's the, my first thought. The second thought is, and I think this is so under, um, underemphasized, especially in the world of YouTube, is keywords. A keyword is like a window into the mind of my customer. It tells me something about what they love and what they hate. And that's why there's so many tools like Jungle Scout, Helium 10, Viral Launch, Amazow, a lot of tools, AMZ Scout now is really rising up. They focus on the keyword. But I think where a lot of disconnect happens is that keyword is not just to get me the product. It's to teach me something about the customer who will buy the product and who will fall in love with the product. And this is why studying critical reviews is so key because in my opinion, there's two things I can learn by studying critical reviews. Number one, what I need to do. And number two, what I need not to do. In other words, I can use my future competitors because if it's a new product, they're not my competitors yet. Even if it's just the top 10 organic ranking competitors for that keyword, I can use their critical reviews to tell me, okay, this is really good. That's a given, I need to do that. And that saves me many hours and thousands of dollars of having to figure that out myself. Well, of course we're gonna include this because they included this hinge or this thickness of material or this kind of um, this uh, color or whatever it is on the product. But I also can find out what customers hate or what they don't like or what's causing them to be disgruntled. And it takes time figuring out how do I know if a review is legit or not? Because sometimes people, they wake up with gum in their hair, they stub their toe, they're in a bad mood and they go, Rrr, and they let out their bad emotions because they just got the product, and they're angry. And so, you know, we have a society today where people get very emotional and they'll just, I'm so angry. And so they post a critical review and that's disheartening to an Amazon seller. So we have to filter those out and find out, okay, which ones tell me what people hate. And typically that's the two and three star reviews, sometimes one, but those tend to be a little more biasly negative, kind of like sometimes the five stars are biasly positive. So those two to three star reviews tell me what customers hate. Now I have a problem to fix. And instead of feeling like, man, I got to fix all the problems because there's a lot, what I'm going to do is instead of finding out which complaint is mentioned the most in total, I find out which complaint is spread out the most evenly amongst the reviews. Because if I'm a customer and I'm scrolling through an Amazon listing and already auto sorts those reviews based on uh, most helpful, and that's based on not on two things. One, the credibility of the reviewer, because Amazon has an internal grading system for each reviewer, just like they have an internal grading system for all of our seller central accounts, but also based on how many people voted it up as helpful. So if I go to those reviews and I study them, that's going to tell me exactly what I need to do to fix. But I'm looking for complaints that are spread out. Now, the reason I'm talking about keywords and reviews and IP Accelerate is I think they're all thematic into one thing, and that is this. It's telling me something about my customer. In other words, you know, when I was a kid, I loved fishing. I would go to Walmart. I would stand in the lure section, and I would pick up these lures, and I had this idea that it, the bigger ones are better, not necessarily. 
but I could experience that by touching it, seeing it, feeling it, smelling it. Well, in Amazon, I only have my eyes. I can only see it. Therefore, it's even more important that we increase that perceived value before they receive that and get the real value. And that's how you build a brand is you find out what does the customer love? It's so easy to focus. Well, the product's going to make me money. That's great. But in my opinion, that's short-term thinking. What is going to actually last? What makes it harder for knockoffs to compete against me, especially if they start hijacking the listing because I already built a brand that people love and trust. Yeah. And, and Seth, if I jump in there just for a second, you know, one of the things about YouTube is, and this really ties into brands and some brands don't capitalize on this. And that is people go to YouTube because they're trying to solve a problem. They're yep. looking for something. Like some people go to get entertained. Some people go to just look at the news, but most people are looking at how do I, right? And it's, there's either a fix or they're looking for something specific to solve some specific need. And if you think about every product creator is doing the same thing, they're trying to solve something. And as you think about, you would hit it right on the fact that there's so much feedback that's available. If you really understand how to use uh, YouTube as a search engine, not just to find things, but to understand how people view your brand. And more importantly, you may find untapped opportunities because of how people are searching for your brand or for your product. And it may change your complete value proposition, your product positioning because of how it's being used differently. But also there's enormous, enormous feedback uh, that is, can be A, actionable, but also could be incredibly detrimental to your brand. So being able to listen, being able to participate. And one of the things I tell my brands that work with me is that it's so important that it's not just about showcasing a capability and feature and function, but be part of the community. Listen, it's free marketing. It's free insight take advantage of it so that you can improve your product, you can improve your value proposition. And I'm telling you, it's like, it's dollars to cents when you compare the kind of insight you get on YouTube. Yeah, you, if I could jump in just with one more thing yeah. real quick, and you made something, a really good point, Milton. There's a tool that people can use even without a software, and I'm not anti-software at all, guys. We're actually building our own software as well that I think is so untapped. And that is Amazon Autocomplete. You type in, you know, I'll just use coffee mug as an example, though I don't sell coffee mugs anymore. And there's a reason for that. And I can explain that too. If you type in coffee mug, and then you just type in A, and it's going to show you the rest of what other Amazon shoppers have been searching. And so in the first ones that come up are the ones that are being searched the most. Well, here's what I find so fascinating, and no one's talking about it. A lot of times what Amazon does in the autocomplete when you just type it in, or you can use a keyword search tool to do it even faster, like, you know, research tool dominator. Oftentimes what comes up and you hit enter from autocomplete on the first page of search results, none of those products are directly relevant to what was searched, which I find mind melting. Like that tells me people are searching for products that don't actually exist yet on Amazon. And so the idea that it has to already be an Amazon, I know it's scary because I want validation. I want validation that, oh, they're selling, okay, I can too. But that also leans me towards the me too mentality, which I have to be careful about because if I launch my product and it's just like my neighbors, well, they're going to kill me because I have no reviews yet. So there are products people are hunting for that no one's selling yet on Amazon. And you can find that in Amazon's autocomplete, just doing their search bar or using a keyword research tool back to brands. That's another way to build a niche in a brand that no one has actually taken ownership for and put you far ahead of the game. Thanks, Seth. Milton, since you interact with the brands, what brand do you think is doing this well right now with one of the products that you've reviewed recently? Um, well, there's several brands. So I work with small end electronics all the way up to the large end electronics, um, as well as um, some of the hobby type tools. So I would say, I know there's one brand here that we've already talked about, Anchor, I think does a really fine job, not just with uh, marketing, but also identifying value and also monitoring the sent client sentiment or user sentiment on, on the ecosystem. But also some of the, um, I would say smaller brands, uh, some of the hobbyist tools, like just recently we've been doing a lot of work with 3D printing technology because with everybody being at home, you know, what's the hobby that's really taking off? And you'll find tons of articles out there talking about how creation at home is becoming a big deal. So using either 3D printers for resin, 3D printers with um, uh, either FDM, what they call, um, anything snap maker type technology where people are just creating stuff. Those things seem to be taking off as well. And those brands are actually taking a, a advantage of this as well. 
And then the other area that I would say is I'm seeing of growth outside of just, you know, uh, content viewing, like home theater type technology, is uh, the, the health space, the wellness space. So surprisingly, I've seen a surge, and I really didn't realize that we would be this popular on the massage gun technology. You know, think about stress management. Think about everyone's working at home. And as I've uh, interviewed um, healthcare practitioners, they talk about the impact of COVID and how they actually see more COVID-related injuries that has nothing to do with COVID, but they're labeling it COVID because of it's happening because you're at home about, you know, just because people are experiencing enormous amount of stress, either standing too much, not wearing shoes at home, because since you don't walk out anymore, how many of you stay barefooted in your home all day? And that's not healthy, right? You, you basically start having all these aches. So I've seen a surge, uh, a healthy, well, unhealthy surge of uh, therapeutics as well as massage type technology because of, of this happening at home. That's awesome. And just to share, just to go on your point, Milton, is like, uh, there's been trends where rug sales have been increasing because everyone's yeah. barefoot in, in their home and they want rugs. But yeah, so product discovery is also, um, you know, another big trend that uh, the community is asking for how to find, how to find products, how to find, how to source those products. And I know, Steph, you gave some tips, but we also have a lot of uh, platforms and resources and tools here. Love to hear from, um, from all of you and see how, how do people, how, what's the best tips you can provide on finding new products? Can I can jump in. Uh, so one thing is also just to kind of understand the scale in which the Amazon search is operating. Um, so for months and month, we observe anywhere near 100 million unique terms show up in the autocomplete bar. 100 million, right? Many of them will fall into the long, long tail terms, but there's a lot of competition that kind of exists there. The other thing you have to be aware of is that from month to month, there's a 30 to 40% turnover in the terms that show up on there, right? So new terms are introduced, seasonal terms come in, uh, terms fall out of fashion, people invent stuff, right? So you know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of things. Like I, I think once we came across um, like <laughs> how to find a restaurant near me, like people had like literally had put that into the search bar, which is just kind of mind blowing, right? So there are these, there are these weird, there, there are these oddities that pop up. So what I would say is like the, the, the most successful people that we've seen come through, um, they, they're kind of voracious about it, right? So they, they don't give up. They don't necessarily kind of the whole, they're, they're not necessarily kind of looking at one, one small area what they're doing is they're just kind of going really far and really wide and then they'll find these opportunities and then go and see what's on the search pages so again for a sense of scale um, we saw about 212 million unique ASINs worldwide last month right so a lot of those are just kind of orphans and what I mean by that is um, if you look at all those pages so like we, we look at page one of search right so everything that shows up on the, on the first page um, about 79% of the ones we found of the unique ASINs are showing up on less than five terms, right? It's less than five pages. So there's a huge opportunity there where like, if you can figure out first of all, where's your niche and then if you can get to about like 10 to 20 keywords where you're showing up on page one, that tends to be like the sweet spot where most people are successful. Um, now all that said, like, I think you also, you, you kind of have to, um, you know, you, you have to pay your due diligence and there's, you know, as mentioned, there's a plethora of tools out there that you should definitely take advantage of to go and see what's available, right? So looking at things like sales estimates and looking at things like, you know, how, what, what are the fees? Like, you know, when it's all said and done, am I making any money, right? And then the last thing is, you know, you don't, one of the things that we've seen a lot that it's kind of, a, um, uh, it, it can lead to peril very quickly is you just kind of go all in on something. So you want to test the market as well. So find what your sweet spot is, figure out what your tolerance for risk is, um, and then put something in, put something into the market where you're willing to lose it all. Right, because you don't know if people will buy it. You don't know if you've got the right setup. You don't know if the you know you don't know if you read the data correctly. Um, you don't know if there's another competitor that'll sweep in and just kind of eat your lunch for you. So, so those kinds of things, I think you have to be really cognizant of is the is massive scale that's out there. Um, it's only continuing to grow, um, and uh, also like figuring out like okay, well, not, not only where's your niche, but how do you expand to that ten to twenty range, keyword range where you're showing up on these many pages because that'll put you automatically in the top 10% of, of all ASINs out there. If, if I could jump into it, um, just to kind of echo what Mark was saying, you know, what, what's so interesting, I think that's happening now too with, with search and Amazon is 
typically if we thought about Amazon like a couple of years ago, it wasn't really that very top of funnel discovery type of search. Those things were happening on places like Pinterest where like people are like, you know, kind of going down that rabbit hole and discovering more things and then like seeing things that find them interesting and then knowing what to search for, you know, and like a lot of the natural language processing you would see on Google, like, you know, what is the best restaurant in my neighborhood? A lot of times you'd find out, then you'd go somewhere and like, you know, like Amazon was a typically more of like a rote search. Like I'm looking for paper towels. I'm looking for a Bluetooth speaker. And what's interesting, and, you know, I don't know this from firsthand knowledge, but, you know, the combination of Alexa and people talking to Alexa like it's a person in the room, I think what we're starting to see and what we're going to see a lot more of is Amazon is going to transition into that more of a natural language type of search where you're saying, like, what's the best way to listen to music as opposed to saying, like, what's the best Bluetooth speaker to use in my backyard? And what's interesting is that kind of convergence of that, like, very, very top of funnel exploratory type of search and how it makes its way down into the individual product you want. And I, I mean, just based on what Mark was saying, you're already starting to see those types of things work their way into the search because that's how people are now thinking about it. People are now talking to their computers. And I don't know that it's just the pandemic that's making us all crazy and making us talk to the computers a little more and our pets and anything or anyone that'll listen, but we already kind of saw that happening. And I think things like Alexa, I think things like Google Home will keep kind of adding to that, which is you're kind of almost having a conversation and then you want an answer to be able to come out of it. This is a good point. Ed, I'd love to hear from you. You're on the, you're on the data side. You, you definitely see these trends. Yeah, I and mean, some of the data out there is absolutely fascinating. And just the ability that we're going to see uh, really turning into practice over the next few years of what we can do with that data and the speed that we can react to market opportunities is really going to to uh, start coming across. I mean, just as a silly example, we did some analysis after Black Friday and uh, it may come as a huge surprise to us all here. Well, I'm sure it doesn't actually, if I'm perfectly honest, that uh, twice as many products actually went up in price over the Black, Black Friday period than dropped. And that kind of started me, even with my most cynical British hat on, I thought there's no way that would be the case. And to be fair to you guys across the pond, we were even worse here in the UK. I think. Uh, our analysis indicated that uh, British companies were putting up prices even more so. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because ultimately, I think a lot of Amazon sellers need to get away from the thought that uh, they'd, they'd apply their, their kind of emotional insights into what to buy and sell, and really to start learning to trust the data. And one of the things that um, I think all of us do in various different ways on the platforms across here is, is give people different insights into um, how to start learning that. So uh, some, th some of the things we've done, we've, uh, we, we've put a lot of basic training into our app now, which um, we're starting to get some really good feedback on. And I think uh, it's, it's just so important to support people in their journey to help steer them away from those basic mistakes that people can make when they first start out. Um, ultimately, you know, we're all here to make Amazon customers successful, Amazon sellers successful. And that's where, that's where we all win, really. I'm curious, Ed, what are you seeing the best sellers do right now from a growth hack perspective? Right, so we know? don't analyze that part of the business so much. So what we do is we look at uh, products that are already sold by retailers. Uh, and we harvest that data and provide that as an uh, opportunity for uh, Amazon sellers to go on and trade. So we don't really give insight into what's going to sell so much. Having said that, you could use uh, yeah, the, the, the platform in order to understand what is currently selling. Uh, in order to give insight into where the opportunities lie. Hey, you know, I, would you mind if I jump in on that? Right. You know, nobody who sure. works in the law firm is is permitted to sell anything. So we have so much confidential information. Mm. But what we've seen, and we started doing it ourselves, as a really low risk or practically zero risk uh, launch system, okay, is issuing press releases. You know, what's old is new again. And we started doing it using a company, PR Newswire, which was kind of pricey. And then there's another one called EIN Newswire, where, you know, let's say you're selling, you know, pens or you're selling, you know, you're selling mice, right, for computers. And so you issue a press release. It goes out on the wire and you're going to pick up anywhere from like 75 to about 150 super high quality organic backlinks that you can send back to your Amazon listing or to your brand or wherever you want it to go. 
And this is like, you know, Market Watch, Yahoo Finance, a whole ton of small TV stations and news media outlets. And it's totally compliant with TOS. They're, they are organic. It also drives Google's algorithm, at least it seems to. And there's like zero risk. Because, you know, who's going to question that NBC News out of Kentucky, you know, is, is doing anything, you know, shady? It's not. Um, so that's one of the things that we've seen in terms of a growth hack, in terms of launch. And from what we've seen, it's like it's been 100 percent safe. I mean, 100 percent, no problems, no listings have gone down, no accounts have gone down, uh, not even brands complaining. I mean, just just a simple thing, like one of these simple genius things that we've seen that's very, very cost effective. Yeah, PR is SEO these days, isn't it? It's, um, we've definitely seen the convergence of those two industries. Thanks. Yeah, I can share. So one of our clients is Anchor. All right, they're the uh, world's largest electronic seller. And what when they built a brand, they wanted to be known as the most recommended charger or the most recommended vacuum cleaner. So what they did was they reached out to influencers like Milton, who's already reviewed a competitor product, and they would make a comparison. They would ask the influencers to create comparison videos. And so we worked on a campaign for a robotic vacuum cleaner where the biggest company in the space is known as iRobot. So they actually asked influencers to compare their robotic vacuum with the competitor iRobot, and they let the influencers do the talking for them and also post the reviews. And then again, they had a very good uh, product to begin with, but that's um, you know growth hack for any, any sellers out there. One, one really key growth hack as well, and it's a little bit more of a case-by-case -case basis depending on the product, because there's certain criteria required to qualify, um, is editorial recommendations. For a long time, Amazon sellers have been asking, well, how do I get an editorial recommendation on my listing? You know, when you search a keyword and about one or two blocks down, it'll show you three edits, like uh, columns or articles written about the product and then if you click a button on the right side, it'll show you the fourth. And of course, if you're in those first three, that's huge. So there's an opportunity right now and it's starting to grow where there is a syndicated publishing house. It's a group of a whole bunch of publishers who all come together under one publisher. And that one publisher was hired by Amazon to collect these and then send these out um, to, for approval by Amazon to be added. So they would have product, they would find products, sometimes ship to them, they write an article and then they post it. So we were approached by a company who said, look, you know, we were asked, they were asked by the publisher house to send them more product ideas because they weren't getting enough, which is a really good problem. What's really unique about this is you just apply, you simply, you go through, there's a form you fill out, you apply, and the, the company, if, the, if your product meets the qualifications, it has to have, and I'm going on a limb here now because I'm struggling to remember, I think it's 100 reviews, but I, don't quote me on that. Um, it has to have a good number. I think it's 100. Um, it has to be selling well, so it has to be ranking in the top first three pages for at least three of the main keywords. And it has to have at least more than three and a half star rating. So if, it, if those qualify, then you fill out the application, you send in all the information, it's sent over to the publishing house, then the publishing house looks at it, and if they like it, then they will write an article on it. Well, the cool thing is right now there's a dearth, there is a lack of articles. Um, the other cool thing about it is the cost is exactly 10% a cost, advertising cost to sale. So it's kind of crazy, but it's like, it, it is a different form of PPC because you are paying for it. You do every time something sells, and by the way, you don't pay unless it sells, which is very different than PPC where you pay when someone clicks. So when the product sells, a percentage of that is paid to the publishing house and the company that's coordinating this for the publishing house and for Amazon. So really, really cool opportunity that I think more sellers need to take advantage of. Yeah. And Seth, one of the things that I've been doing a lot more and this, I think it, um, it launched in November, is the video influencer program where videos also, um, yeah. these are more, I would say, um, I don't want to, they're more, they're more not curated, but they're, they are reviewed. But at the same time, one of the biggest problems that you have with Amazon reviews is those stars. You know, there, there are 
there is a process out there where people are seeking to get high ranked without really or buying reviews, right? So yep. just, just like that. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, that happens. But these uh, video influencers, which I am one of them, uh, we get to be able to put our content about a brand. And when someone is looking for a product, they actually see at the very bottom in that area as well, they actually see a video that talks about that product and gives that customer the ability to to be more informed about the product, about the benefits of the product. And there's a couple of things that the brands that I've spoken to actually uh, have seen as a result. Uh, one, uh, we're, they're seeing a lot more sales driven by watching a video that leads into a sale. And two, it also returns the returns because if someone knows what they're buying and how it's used, it reduces the return. And you think about the mm. return, there's a cost to the return. So that's kind of like a hidden value of these mm. video of these video influencer type models. That's so cool. So I've been seeing more and more, you know, as I communicate and work with brands, I always ask them, do you have an Amazon presence? Do you have a store? And if you have a store, right. we'll publish our video there and it will show up right next to your product. And that's it's really going to cool. help again, drive that yeah. brand recognition, reduce the returns. And then also just uh, YouTube and Amazon are search engines. And this helps again, their algorithms, it helps feed more, more, I would say traction to their products. It's, it's a great opportunity that I'm not saying yeah. many people take advantage of, but it's a growing trend. And Milton, just for my clarity, you're referring to not the option to upload a video in, in the same area where you put photos, you're talking about the video influence where you actually see someone reviewing the product. Here's my experience. Correct? Yeah. So, so basically, so basically it's not a starred rating. It's basically you have consumer reports, ratings.com. You'll find me there as well. And you'll find related videos to that product hmm. and you'll find a listing of them there. And before yeah. that was, it wasn't something that was really open uh, to, to influencers. You have to be an Amazon influencer to begin with, but now yeah. that content, you can actually tag it to a specific product as opposed to having a YouTube video that has a link that drives it. So now Amazon is leveraging the power of its search engine to drive content and videos about the products that it has on a marketplace. Yeah, I, I can't help jump it. in on that. Go ahead, you, go ahead. If, if you, every seller out there can create really high quality video content. It really is easy to do, it's cost efficient. You can then have whatever you're saying about your product. Um, transcribed by software that gives you like 80, 90%. We use a company called Rev, R -E -V .com. They do a great, great job. And every time you create a piece of video footage, that is copyright, whether you register or not, you own that. That's building up your intellectual property library. Mm. Yep. And you can post it on YouTube, you can put it on Facebook, you can put it yeah. on your listing, you can chop it up and slice it and recycle it into many different ways. And that is the modern form of goodwill. You know, back in the day, you bought a business's goodwill. Now your value is in your IP and copyright is the easiest of all because you can do it with your phone, you get a good microphone, you get a tripod and you have killer video and you don't have to file anything. You don't have to pay a lawyer anything. You instantaneously copyright are building assets as you're just talking into your phone. It, it's fantastic. And all of it's those easy. things are easily available on Amazon too, which is the <laughs> funny yeah. thing. Yeah. And that makes it more defensible, right, CJ? Where, because the more content you're creating, that's more IP. The more you can defense and say, hey, Amazon, we're a brand. We created this. This isn't just some other resale arbitrage. This is our own brand. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And what you said earlier about the IP Accelerator program, we entirely stopped doing trademark apps for anybody because IP <laughs> Accelerate is so much better. You know, as, as I said it, I thought, oh, shoot, no, am no, I no, stepping up a little <laughs> When it came out, when IP Accelerator was launched, we saw it like, this is freaking awesome. Yeah. And we, I must refer probably a dozen, two dozen people a right. week to IP Accelerator. <laughs> because while their research isn't so great, they do get brand registry. We're seeing it within a week. And oh, it's wow. absolutely That's killer. Crazy. It's unbelievable. But, I remember the day when you had, well, first you just had to have the application. You could get approved for brand registry. We got a brand approved for that. Then they changed it and you have to be approved. In other words, you have to actually have a trademark approved by USPTO.gov before you can get trademarked. And, and that's then what was taking nine with this. months minimum. It's like you would have to wait 12 to 18 months. Here, here's one of the things that people need to realize. And I send people to IP Accelerator every day of the week, literally seven days a week. What you need to make sure though, is that the research before they do the application is good because we're starting to see people who used IP Accelerator, 
got brand registry for a mark that then gets oh. rejected. And then some, the USPTO rejects it. That's horrible. And then you only have, you could do, I think it's like three different office actions to fight to try and get it. But yeah. the research before you do the application, that's really where the rubber hits the road. Yeah. But IP Accelerator is killer. You get brand registry practically immediately, but make sure you or someone else is doing the research first. Yeah. And it's really easy. You can just basically Google whatever totally. word you're trying to use. Yeah, those like are great, no those no are great growth word. hacks, guys. And I'd, I love to hear from uh, Ram. I see, you, I see you agreeing with a lot of the points. What are the, some of the other growth hacks that you're seeing uh, and what you're doing? One, I would definitely agree to CJ. I think I reached out to him a couple of months ago. <laughs> and the first thing he said was, reach out to IP Accelerator. Right? That's the first thing I said. So I would completely agree to that. And I, I kind of want to touch base on both the points what Milton as well as Seth said, right? So we had a couple of customers recently who did use the editorial recommendation as well as the video influencer, right? And that has skyrocketed their sales, right? So they were doing close to maybe 300 orders a day. And when that hit out, probably within three weeks or four weeks, now they're doing close to 800 orders a day, right? So those influences kind of really help the sellers. But I think one point which I want to kind of really, you know, put out, right? So I think we, we touched base on multiple, you know, data points, consumer behaviors and everything, right? But I think one of the most critical things, you know, for a seller is, you know, be obsessive, right? I mean, Amazon is, it's a long game, right? It's not something where you create something for a month and you expect magic to happen, right? It's a long game. It's like a company. It is going to be there for six months, 12 months. You have to really hit it out for the next 18 months. You have to invest your time. You have to spend in money. Uh, it's really to trying to understand the customer pulse, right? Uh, you understand the pulse. You understand the, what the trends are. And based on that, you can project what you want to do, right? I mean, when, I mean, before the pandemic, uh, you know, when I think it was 2019, December, uh, you know, we were in multiple marketplaces and we slowly saw the trend of the mask, right? The N95 mask. And we had customers coming up in November and December saying, hey, you know, how's the trend for mask? And we said, you know what, from October to December, there's an increase. And when we hit in Jan and Feb, we saw close to 300 sellers trying to sell all masks, right? And obviously most of them Amazon rejected because then Amazon curtailed the number of sellers to sell masks, right? So it's really important to kind of understand what the customer is looking for, get their feedback, right? Try to understand, you know, go into the reviews, look at your ratings, try to understand what they're, you know, what they're complaining. Are they saying good? Are they saying anything bad? And try to make improvements, right? I mean, it's a continuous optimization, right? I mean, it's, it's, it goes with your listing, it goes with the PPC, it's, it's, you cannot sleep. I mean, Amazon is a 24-7 business. I mean, every single day, every single time, and especially if you're doing multiple marketplaces, you have to be awake 24-7, right? I mean, we have an entire team, close to a 90-member team who works on a 24-7 cycle. We look at, you know, PPC at different time zones. We look at listings at different time zones. So it's, 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 you have to be really obsessed. I mean, it's, it, that's the end goal of Amazon, right? You put in money, you make in money. If you don't put in money, you, you probably lay down the bags for that. Hey, Ram, I want to apologize for not saying hello. Every <laughs> time anybody contacts us for anything, it's confidential. And I've had this situation before where I can't say hello because I can't reveal anything at all. Uh, but great to see you. No problem. Yeah. One thing I just wanted to add, just to give you guys a sense, I'm looking at my stats. And this is just to give you a sense of the untapped potential around the, the power of video. Uh, just for one of my brands in the last 15 days, last 15 days, they have seen there's been over 2,000 video views on a specific product that come directly from Amazon. Um, average view time is 57%. So you got to ask yourself, if someone watches 57% of the video, what's the likelihood of that person becoming a buyer? Hi. High, massive amount. So I see, you know, it's just, it's, it just skyrockets. So really for, for me, if you can have a, a, an influencer that is authentic, that is unbiased, that people trust, because that's going to, you know, that's important as well. Uh, because, you know, once again, that's going to be the hard part. You have to take, I believe that with every positive feedback you get, you're always going to have negative, right? So you have to be able to accept both sides of the coin. Uh, it's, it's just an enormous opportunity. And if you think about the cost of actually advertising on TV or on any other medium, you know, one thing is to advertise in TV and hope that someone comes to your store. The other thing is to have it there in your store. You know, that's, there's, what else can you say? Yeah. 
Well, if I could jump in for a second too, I, I think you bring up a really good point, Milton, which is like influencers actually have to have true influence. And so when you're like choosing which influencers to work with, like, you know, like in our case, like, you know, Beyonce has a lot of influence out there and she has a big following, you know, talking about how to leverage outside capital, Beyonce is probably not going to be the best fit as opposed to someone like an accountant or someone. And I think like a lot of times when people think about influencers, they go immediately to how many views does someone have? How much clout does someone have? And a lot of times you'll find a lot of success working with a smaller influencer um, yeah. who actually has true. true influence over their yeah. audience and can actually 1, drive action. Yeah, yeah. And, and I would encourage like any brand, it's like, read the comments. You don't know how many times I'll get people to say, I was waiting for your review to buy, right? That's powerful. When you have someone that's, I was waiting for you. Um, you know, just recently, you know, with Samsung's launch for the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro, I had dozens of emails. When are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? I'm not buying until I hear from you. And, and again, when you think about that, I'm not reaching out to someone. I'm not like picking up the, you know, and saying, hey, Alex, but they, the, again, the fact that the video is there, I am reaching out. They want to hear it, they want to see it, and they want to know. So partnering with the right influencer that has the influence, and you're right, the, I, look at, I look at my numbers when I look at the actual buying, and I talk to some of the larger brands because, you know, you, you have a great community. They're pretty ast astounded and say, wow, you're, you're doing that? And I'm like, yeah, and it says, how does it compare? And a lot of it is just people watch, and, and you also have to look at the the, the influencer that has the right audience, because it's not just about views, it's who has the disposable income, right? And, and just like with every, with every area, you have the mass affluent, you have the less affluent, and you know, who are you actually going after? So the example of the vacuum cleaner, who's gonna spend 150 bucks for a vacuum cleaner? What's the right audience? What's the demographics you're going for? So it's really about tying that. It's not just about, let's put something out there, but find the right partner, find the right uh, influencer, and, uh, and work with them. And to piggyback off that concept of the influencer, the influencers also create content for the brands. And we've seen this with Anchor where they're actually featuring a lot of this influencer created brand content, not just on their Amazon store, but in their social stories. So it kind of goes the full, you know, you're going to use that content over and over again. So thanks yeah, Milton yeah. for sharing the, that. the last one I did for Anchor since we're talking about them is the Nebula. You know, they oh, had we a know them well. They, they had the campaign for the Super Bowl, right? So, and again, great product, 4K, very, very well affordable. They timed it right. Um, they did good seating. And then also, um, I don't know how many people they worked with who have actually an Amazon presence, but my anchor review is there. You know, so when someone looks at the Nebula, they see my video and they can see the experience that they'll get. That's right. So we're seeing that more and more. And as part of the strategy and growth hacks that um, a lot of Amazon sellers are looking for, it's the influencer. Thomas, I'd love to hear from you. You know, we're, we're getting close to the hour. Uh, what are your thoughts on what are the growth hacks that Amazon sellers or just the Amazon ecosystem? I'm just thinking even off the top of my head, automation has become a big buzzword. Yeah, yeah no, I think um, like many of the growth hacks that we just, just talked about, I think are definitely big ones that we also see as well. Um, I think there's a pretty much a big new world, right? Which is which is coming up when we think about growth hacks. And also when we talk about brands, when we talk about videos, when we talk about brand building. And this is, I think, everything that Amazon does around advertising. Um, and it's not just, you know, in the beginning. I think there are many, many, many different strategies that people try to do when they think about growth hacks. How do I ensure that whenever I launch a product that I get the best sponsored product ads and I get my sales up, that I get the right ACOS? It's also late on. Right, when you really think about, we talked a lot about videos and the power of video. And that's exactly what we see as well. Amazon is pushing video a lot, also with the traditional format, sponsor brands, sponsor brands video. It's something which we see really, really kind of like going through the roof for many that know how to really target, they know how to automate it, they know how to create great videos. So I think the, the whole world you know, of basically advertising conducts tons of new growth tax, right? Which I think uh, haven't been there for a while. When I started to sell myself on Amazon 10 years ago, it was a very, very different ball game of what was basically possible back in the days. If we now look at this group here today, there's so much data, so much intelligence, so much insights. And I think if anyone out there really thinks about growth hacks, I can just encourage people to be creative, right? There are opportunities everywhere. And you know, you have so many great tools and databases out there, just use them and think about how you really can leverage them to get your message across to, to your customers. 
Yeah. And one of the questions that we always get asked is, Hey, how do I know where to start? And it's funny because one of the growth hacks that we always recommend is take a look at what competitors are doing. In, in many cases, there's someone selling a similar product and leverage what they've already learned. But um, yeah, I think uh, if, if we can just go around really quick and if everyone could just mention one growth hack, uh, I know a lot of the people listening in are, are actually uh, thinking of either creating an Amazon store or have one. So if we can go around just really quick, two, two, three seconds, what are your favorite growth hacks that you're seeing today? Let's start yeah, with you, Ram. Um, Piggyback. Uh, off of what CJ said was actually acquiring an Amazon business. I do think that if you can acquire an existing business and scale it up, uh, that would be a good way to do it. Especially with SBA financing right now, you should be able to leverage just government, you know, USA. Look at look in the uh, comments that people read um, have left uh, with competitors. It's a total goldmine of uh, information. I think for any business, really useful to know, you know, what, what how you can improve. My recommendation for starting is don't sell a product that sells for under $25. It's better to sell a product for $80 or $100. And a new seller is going to think, well, I'm going to save money. But actually, it's a lot more expensive to rank a low-cost product than a high-cost product because you have fixed PPC, uh, fixed PPC costs. They're not based on the, the amount. In other words, they're based on how long it's been out. Um, you have fixed shipping costs, FBA fees. Those are based on size and weight. So I would recommend anyone starting out, don't start with a low price product. Start with a more expensive product. It might take you more time to get the capital up front, but your margins are so much bigger because if I have a coffee mug versus a set of headphones in the same size and weight, my margins are way better in the headphones because of the fixed shipping costs as well as the fixed um, Amazon FBA fulfillment fees. And PPC, again, is not based on how much the product sells for. It's based on how much competition is for that keyword Therefore, a higher price product doesn't mean higher price PPC. I can jump in. Um, I think one of them, and it's kind of been mentioned before, is, you know, like, and we see this a lot with uh, like retail arbitrage or resellers moving into having their own brand and having their own product. And a lot of times where mistakes happen is I want to come up with an invention and I think I have the greatest idea ever. And look, it's not even being sold on Amazon. And that typically is because it probably can't sell. And so what we see with the best success stories are people have already been reselling a product and they find out through their reviews and the complaints what they would like that in product to be improved upon. They know how to sell that product. They know how to price that product. And now they know what, the sell, what, what customers want to make that product better. And you can take that product, even if that product is patent protected, once you improve upon it, as CJ would probably agree to, like once you improve upon that product, it is new now. And so like what we see is like, you know, case of like a Bluetooth speaker, which is an example I use a lot because I watched this happen. Everyone complained that they wished that the Bluetooth speaker would float in the pool. It was person was selling Bluetooth speakers, kept getting complaints, kept getting complaints, he made it float. And so like, there are like things like that, that like, they knew how to sell the speaker. They're just making it better as opposed to trying to conjure something out of thin air. hundred percent. I got I'll jump in. In the eighties, it was gold, right? In the nineties, we had the dot-com bubble. Then you had the real estate bubble, right? And now you have this Amazon bubble and this is all being driven by intellectual property. So it's brand building by creating content. Video is a huge, easy, efficient way of doing it. Content equals intellectual property that fuels tremendous growth. So that that that's what I, I would leave that with. This you have to develop your brand as a story brand by developing content that is intellectual property, and that is just what's going to drive the value of your business through the roof in 2021. Thank you, CJ. Well said. So. I do want to wrap up. Uh, we're coming up, up to the hour, but I want to thank everyone. We'll be sending everybody uh, an invite to our private Slack mastermind where you all be able to connect and ask questions. I know, Milton, I, I, I feel like a lot of uh, the other panelists want to work with you now. But yeah, Jeff, do you want to uh, say anything real fast? Yeah, so thank you I, again. Really, everybody looks up to you in terms of thought leaders and uh, people from all aspects of the Amazon industry. We can all help each other by making introductions and liber le leveraging insights from each other. So as Ivan mentioned, we'll be sending over a link to our private Slack group. We have these masterminds once a month and uh, good luck out there.